Happy New Year. I'm Carrie Pfeffer. Diana has the night off. Tonight, Fiesta Bowl fever is winding down, but if your team didn't win or you're not even a football fan, it doesn't matter. This bowl game impacts all of us. The Colorado Buffaloes and the Oregon Ducks battle this afternoon in front of a packed Sun Devil Stadium crowd. And we'll talk with Chris Caraggio in a few minutes about the big game, but we start in Tempe with Lori Raymond. And Lori, the game's over, but the city is still buzzing tonight. Oh, Carrie, it's hopping, and fans are breaking out the cast. You can probably see some of the activity here behind me. Uh, in fact, the Fiesta Bowl representatives say that the game, the money from the game, brings in about 75 to $100 million to the local economy. And shop owners that we spoke to here on Mill Avenue say it couldn't come at a better time. The fans poured out of the stadium and filtered into various shops and restaurants along Mill Avenue. That's just exactly what local business owners count on. Oh, it was packed. Very packed. The whole day was at Cold Stone. was mainly just rush in, rush out. 14-year-old Reed Schmidt was helping his father out with two family businesses, Cold Stone and Arizona Shorts. The second company was offering Colorado merchandise at a discount. Schmidt says the company raked in thousands of dollars Monday and Tuesday, and it's not the only one. It has helped up business tremendously. Stuart DeMar owns Duck Soup, which is just a few blocks away. It sells fun <laughs> knickknacks and championship merchandise, of course. DeMar says local businesses rely heavily on the money that Fiesta Bowl fans bring with them. In the last 10 days of December, we've actually done more business than we did in the first 20 days during the holiday season. So it's, it's, it's been great. Business owners here say that money from the game has help them make up for a very soft holiday season, so they say it was a godsend. And some people also tell us that they've done better this year on New Year's Day than they did last year, which they say was very unexpected, so hopefully, Carrie, that's a sign of better things to come. A pleasant surprise. Right. Thanks very much, Lori. The football game was a close one, at least for the first few minutes. Buffalo fans left with a little to cheer about in this matchup. Sports director Chris Caraggio joins us now, and I guess on paper, Colorado was supposed to perhaps do better, but that wasn't the case. Now this was a surprise to just about everybody because third-ranked Colorado came into this Fiesta Bowl, probably the hottest college football team in the country, but you know what? Second-ranked Oregon, they, they weren't too impressed. This was certainly a day for the Ducks. Down 7-0, first quarter, Joey Harrington on a line. That Keenan Howery, it was 7-7, one of four touchdown passes for Joey Harrington. And on the other side of the ball, this guy making all the noise for the Ducks. Steve Smith, one interception, make that two interceptions, check that, make that three interceptions on the day for Mr. Steve Smith. Your final 38-16 Oregon wins, and head coach Mike Bellotti, well, he talked about the mood of his defense coming into this game. Angry, hostile, uh, probably feeling quite a bit underrated and wanting to prove a point. And I think that that's true of the coaches and players. And I think that they obviously show that they can play with anybody in the nation. So if Nebraska beats Miami Thursday in Pasadena, then Oregon will be co-national champs. More on this Fiesta Bowl coming later in sports. Thanks, Chris. As expected, security was extremely tight at today's game. Fans were greeted by security guards as they made their way into Sun Devil Stadium. Heightened security made for some lines, but overall, we're told there were no major problems. There's a new record this New Year's Day when it comes to drunk driving and the number of arrests. TV5's Morgan Lowe joins us now with more on that. Morgan? Kerry, this new record means more accused drunk drivers are going to find themselves here at Superior Court after the holiday season. Now, this does not necessarily mean that there were more drunk drivers on the road. DUI uh, task force officials tell us it just means that they had more help in catching impaired drivers. This was not the way Valley law enforcement officers had hoped to end their holiday DUI task force. A smashed Mesa patrol car and a flipped red Integra. The driver of this car dead. Two police officers injured. At this point, it does appear that alcohol is a factor in the collision. We've been provided with information that the driver of the Integra was coming from a party just up the street and was returning to his home. But all in all, it was a successful year for DUI task forces statewide. They broke a record, arresting 3,201 people since late November, compared to 2,922 last year. Organizers say new, stronger laws helped, as well as more officers on the streets. It is. It's about 1,000 more this year than last year. 
that worked from November 21st to through this morning. Alberto Gutierrez says the final arrests came in at close to 5 o'clock this morning. But he believes the streets were also safer this holiday season than ever before, thanks to the high visibility of the task forces. I think overall, the message is out there about drinking and driving. And you got to remember our slogan, drive hammered, get nailed. Now, those people who are arrested are going to find themselves in a costly legal procedure here at Superior Court. And even though the number of arrests was up, officers say that that uh, really only scratches the surface. They say during a night like last night, it's safe to guess that as many as one in ten drivers on the streets is impaired. Carrie? All right, Morgan, thanks very much. It's another unwanted record that was set this past year. The number of murders in Phoenix reached an all-time high. But police say that doesn't mean the city is less safe than before. They say when you factor in population growth, the rate is actually lower than some recent years. Police say those involved in drugs or other criminal activities were more likely to become victims. These are human lives. And whether it's been a record-setting year or not a record-setting year for us in terms of death, any number of homicides is too many to tolerate, and, and it sends the point home that in, in respect to the victims and their families and their loved ones, that there's still a lot of work to be done to prevent homicides. You may wonder just how our murder rate compares to other big cities across the country. Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Boston, and Pittsburgh all top the list of other cities where homicides have risen significantly this past year. Despite pleas aimed at stopping random gunfire, as you can hear, people still decided to ring in the new year by shooting off guns. The good news is there have been no reports of injuries this year from New Year's random gunfire. Remember, it is a felony to fire random shots within city limits. A security guard is recovering tonight after being shot in the face. It happened outside this Phoenix homeless shelter. Police say a woman was trying to buy narcotics from a man when a fight broke out between the two. Police tell us the guard came out to break it up when the man shot him. The guard is in serious condition. Members of the U.S. military are not slowing down when it comes to their search for Osama bin Laden and Taliban leaders. The latest on the war against terrorism is next. And it's a special New Year's Day delivery for One Valley family, but this birth came with some unexpected challenges. That's coming up later. And did you see Lord of the Rings? Some fans are apparently keeping count on the movie's mistakes. That's after weather. And I'm Ron Merritt. Coming up in weather, if last year seemed to be a little bit on the warm side for you, that's because it was. We're going to take a look at the statistics for 2001. Plus, I'll give you my forecast for the first full week of 2002 in the seven days. Stay with us. We'll be back. Tomorrow from 5 to 7 a.m. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Sanchez. Spending more time in your car these days? More cars are going high-tech. We'll show you the latest gadgets you can use on the road. Stick to your New Year's resolution. We'll have expert advice on how to reach your weight loss goals. And pamper yourself a little. We'll show you how to lose weight and get a massage at the same time. Watch TV5 Morning News tomorrow from 5 to 7. Want to get your hands on the hottest game systems? Here's your chance. Introducing the Blockbuster Great Games Giveaway. Come in today for your chance to win one of 1,000 of the hottest game systems around. Xbox. GameCube. PlayStation 2. Or Game Boy Advance. All you have to do is rent or buy anything in the store and you're automatically entered to win. It's the Blockbuster Great Games Giveaway. Blockbuster. Open on New Year's Day. You're in the right place at the right time. Chapman Chevrolet keeps America rolling with 0% financing on all new cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. 0% financing on new Tahoes and Suburbans, plus $1,500 cash back to you. New Chapman Chevrolet 4x4 Tahoes, priced from $28,900, and 4x4 Suburbans as low as $29,900. This special financing offer ends January 2nd. Keep America rolling at Chapman Chevrolet Isuzu. Baseline in McClintock and Tempe. You can make the Chapman choice. I want to tell the world about a friend I know. He eats at Subway, which is where I go. I'm so happy I just got a smile. Because thanks to Jared, I have a whole new side. With x 
exercise and a diet including Subway 7 sandwiches with 6 grams of fat or less, people are finding a tasty way to look and feel better. Anyone sitting here? Subway, keep fresh. Proud sponsor of the American Heart Association's Heart Walk. Tonight, U.S. Marines are believed to be closing in on Taliban Supreme Leader Mullah Omar. But the closer they get, the more resistance they could see. CBS correspondent Jennifer Miller has the latest as America fights back against terrorism. In New York City, a grim reminder of why the U.S. is at war. Tuesday night, firefighters gathered at Ground Zero as another body was pulled from the ruins of the World Trade Center. In Afghanistan, the search for Taliban Supreme Leader Mullah Omar continues. A convoy of about 200 Marines left their base in Kandahar. Another 100 took off in Sinai helicopters. They traveled to a compound near the city that was used by the Taliban. Even though they say they were only looking for intelligence, they didn't take any chances. We probably had five times more Marines than we needed, but we always go uh, with enough force that if things don't go the way we plan it, that we're prepared for the worst. Sources say Omar could be hiding in the remote mountain village of Bagran, about 100 miles outside Kandahar. But even if forces find him, capturing him could be tough. Officials believe Omar is traveling with up to 1,500 Taliban fighters. Meanwhile, 25 suspected al-Qaeda members captured in Pakistan are now being detained at the U.S. base in Kandahar. The U.S. plans to interrogate them for information that will lead to bin Laden. And Wednesday, the first man to be indicted in connection with the September 11th attacks will be in court. Zacharias Musawi will be arraigned on charges of conspiracy to commit terrorism. Jennifer Miller, CBS News, Washington. From the terrorist attacks to the presidential re-election, or presidential ballot recounts, rather, 2001 was definitely a year that will make history. So what news stories were considered the biggest this year? According to the Associated Press list of the top stories of 2001, the inauguration of George W. Bush ranks fifth, fourth is the recession in the U.S., third, fears of anthrax, and second is the war on terrorism. Of course, topping the list is the terrorist attacks on September 11th. The September attacks also topped the 2001 international top stories list. We will shift, shift gears now, look at weather is coming up next. Are we in for a warm-up? Ron joins us with his forecast after the break. This portion of the news was brought to you by Lund Cadillac. An automobile donates us or a boat or plane, whatever it may happen to be, enables us to provide what we call a one-stop shopping center. When you donate a car to me, you can say, I want this to help kids. Great, we'll use the kids. I want this to be used as Father Joe says it needs to be used. I want it to be used for meals. I want it to be used for housing. I want it to be used only for medical care. You can actually tell us that. New cars, old cars, used cars, boats, planes. Just give us a call. For free pickup of your tax deductible donation, call 1-888-FATHER-JOE. Ring in the new year with incredible values. It's time for New Year's savings at Robin Stuckey. Take advantage of store-wide savings on the best selection of the best home furnishings. And this holiday weekend only, enjoy zero payment, zero interest financing till July. This is your chance to save. Enjoy the guaranteed lowest prices on the best names and furniture, and this holiday weekend only, have no payment, no interest, financing till July. But hurry, it ends New Year's Day, and it's only at Rob and Stuckey, America's leader. Hey, Boitano, LT, check it out. A dollar. So what can you get for a buck these days? A phone call? Your autograph? Whoa, guys, wait. For just 99 cents, you can get great food. Like my new Big Cheeseburger. A big patty with two kinds of melting cheese for just 99 cents. Sow cow. <laughs> Motor Trend, the magazine that brings you the latest in new models, exotic cars, and concept vehicles, comes to life. At the Arizona International Auto Show, now through January 6th. Check out the hottest 2002 model vehicles and 2003 sneak preview. Plus concept cars, exotics, electric vehicles, classic cars, and motorcycles. This weekend, don't miss the Four Wheel Expo featuring hardcore, off-road vehicles, parts, aftermarket equipment, and accessories. It's all at the Arizona International Auto Show, now through January 6th at the Phoenix Civic Plaza, where the pages of Motor Trend come alive. Think you know who will win Survivor Africa? 
Let's pick the ultimate survivor, and you can be one of five lucky viewers to win a flight of your life. Get aerobatic ride with Fighter Combat International. The contest begins Friday, January 4th. You can better your odds by keeping close tabs on the tactics being used by the remaining contestants. Watch the final Survivor episodes Thursday nights at 7 here on TV5. Visit kphotv5.com and click on the Pick the Survivor for details. It's the annual event that makes many of us ask, why? Today, more than 100 New York City area swimmers took a dip in the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Members of the Polar Bear Club USA braved the low temps to take the traditional cold plunge. And then that's usually preceded by another oh. tradition that we <laughs> won't get into, but I think Ew. you need something to kind of motivate you to get Oh, into. yeah. <laughs> something There's strange. no way I would on. do anything like that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We're not used to that. No, we're not used to that at all, especially here in Phoenix. We like the warmth, and we're going to see more of it, too. But we will have another storm system arriving, though, as we head into, say, Thursday morning. We'll see a slight chance for some rain here in the valley. Otherwise, it looks like it's going to be free and clear for our first week. But last year was certainly a very, very warm year. In fact, statistically, here in the valley, it was the fourth warmest year on record with an average high of just over 87 degrees, which is uh, about a degree and a half warmer than our normal. But check out the average low at 64.4 degrees. Normally, we see lows around 59.3 degrees, which means we're talking five degree difference there in the average low. And that's why overall, when you figure all the numbers in, the fourth warmest year. Now, if you're wondering what the warmest year on record here in the valley, that was set back in 1989. Now, we didn't do too well in our rainfall either. Our total rainfall for the year was 6.72 inches. Normally, the Phoenix metro area averages 7.66 inches of year of rain per year. So we're going to end up just below uh, an inch, about officially 94 hundredths of an inch. We certainly do need some more rain. Currently at Sky Harbor at the 10 o'clock hour, we're looking at 56 degrees, 37 on the dew point, humidity at 49. Your winds out of the east at 6, and the barometer is on the rise. We hit 67 today, which was... Two degrees above the normal for a change. 44 was our low this morning. 81, our record set back in 1981, of course. Very, very safe. Here's a look at the highs across the state for today. You folks up in Flagstaff only hit 36 for the afternoon high. 38 in Winslow, 56 in Sedona, 54 in Payson, and 63 down in Tucson. Here's what's happening across the region tonight. Still looking at some increasing clouds now pushing into western Arizona. This is coming from the next storm system, which will be affecting us. Now, this next storm system is not going to be a big deal. In fact, I'm only forecasting a slight chance for a couple sprinkles only on Thursday morning here in the Phoenix metro area. However, as this storm system comes ashore, we will be looking at some at least a little greater chance of seeing some precipitation, mainly in the form of snow in the higher elevations across northern Arizona. Widen the picture out a little bit, you can see the bulk of the storm is actually going to veer up into the Pacific Northwest. So we're only going to see really the tail end of it here push across northern Arizona. So this is not going to be a major storm for us. And once we get through this storm, High pressure is going to build across the region, and that is pretty much going to protect us for the next several days. Take a look at what the predictor has in store for us now. The predictor, of course, is the most advanced technology that we use on uh, TV5 here, and it is a very, very good tool. We're looking at some increasing clouds only as we head into tomorrow, so we're going to call it partly cloudy overall. Here comes the rain band. It'll be arriving early Thursday morning. We'll push into western Arizona and eventually into central Arizona, and that's what's going to give us our very slight chance of rain. Quick look at the country tonight. Here's the storm in the west. We get another storm here in the southeast, producing rain along the coast. But as you head into other parts of the southeast, look at this, a band of snow throughout central and southern, both Mississippi and Alabama. Come back home tonight to our forecast lows. 20 in Flagstaff tonight, forecasting 27 for Prescott. Check out tomorrow's highs. Again, much like today, our temperature should be a couple degrees above normal or so. Not too bad. Tonight for the valley, mostly clear. 46 downtown, 37 in the Outer Valley spots. Here's my seven-day forecast. We will be looking at just an ever so slight chance of a sprinkle on Thursday. Once we get through that, look for sunshine for the upcoming weekend, the first weekend of 2002, with temperatures right around seasonal normals. Not and too bad. Yes, not bad at all. And yeah. a thank you to all those people who came in and saw the Insight.com. Oh, yeah. The festival. yeah. Enjoy having them and hope they enjoyed it as well. Absolutely. The Lord of the Rings is one of the hottest movies in theaters right now, but fans are doing more than seeing the film. They're also counting the mistakes. So far, 37 are said to have been found. They're listed on moviemistakes.com. Goofs like a scene where a shoe is spotted on Hobbit Frodo's foot. 37 doesn't seem like a lot, though, when you hear Harry Potter fans found more than 50 errors in that movie. 
When we come back, ringing in the new year with the newest residents around. Meet the families who have much to be happy about this holiday. Today's news is brought to you in part by Maytag. It's the grand opening of the Maytag store in the Chandler Pavilion Shopping Center. Now the Southeast Valley can experience Maytag performance in action with appliances you can actually see, touch, and hear at work. Save on Maytag Gen Air and Magic Chef appliances and on Hoover vacuums. With personalized attention from their great sales staff, you're on your way to making the right choice. Stop in and test drive your next appliance. The Maytag store in Phoenix, Glendale, and now in the Chandler Pavilion at Ray Road and I-10. Lights in town That's where the special times are found <laughs> I like it, Red. This holiday at Blockbuster, enjoy some special times with these hot new releases. Evolution, Moulin Rouge, and Scary Movie 2. Rent them tonight on DVD or VHS. Well, that's a wrap, Shadow. Let's go. Thomasville, America's leader in fine home furnishings, wants you to start the new year off with taste and style. It's never been more affordable to purchase Thomasville quality and craftsmanship. Thomasville invites you to celebrate the new year with store-wide savings at all three Valley locations. And for a limited time, make no payments, pay no interest, and no finance charges till 2003. Start the new year off right and come into Thomasville today. At Thomasville, we've got the style just for Think your business can't afford to advertise on television? The fact is, you can't afford not to. Television has a greater impact on attracting new customers to your business than any other medium. And there has never been a better time to advertise on television than right now. Call KPHO TV5 at 602-650-5406 and let us help you reach more customers more often and more affordably. No. Fazoli's Pizza Bake Spaghetti is loaded with sausage, pepperoni, and cheese. Now that's sure to bring out the Italian in everyone. Fazoli's, everyone's Italian. No New Year's Day rest for work crews in New York City after you throw a party for half a million people, you have to clean up. Workers were out this morning picking up the mess. Temperatures were in the low teens, but a huge crowd packed Times Square to watch the ball drop at midnight. The celebration went off without a hitch. All seemed to go according to plan in downtown Tempe. Thousands of people turned out for the always popular Fiesta Bowl block party. There were no major problems to report. We're told in all, five people were arrested. That's compared to 13 the year before. And just like Times Square, after you throw a big party, what's left of the big cleanup? Just hours after welcoming in the new year, crews had the entire downtown Tempe area back to normal again. Some Valley families have an extra reason to celebrate this New Year's. Meet newborn Mia Lorena Gallegos. She was born at midnight on the dot. Mia weighed in at 7 pounds, 9 ounces at Thunderbird Sam Medical Center. Big smiles tonight for the Flores family. They welcomed Francisco Jose Flores this first day of the year 2002. The baby weighing in at nearly 10 pounds was actually 16 days overdue. Mom was in labor for 9 hours and had to have an emergency C-section when it was discovered the umbilical cord was around the baby's neck. Everything turned out just fine, though, and baby and mom are said to be doing great. Another tradition we see this time of year, parades. Today was the annual Tournament of Roses parade in Pasadena. The parade featured a patriotic theme and kicked off with the Star Spangled Banner and God Bless America. But it'll be a while before we actually see the mm -hmm. Rose Bowl Game. You know, I got my seat today at Centerville Stadium. I yes, sat in, to go. Got hunkered ready, down ready for, a, for a big, you know, close matchup tight, and then after a while, I was <laughs> kind of leaning back. Yeah, <laughs> kind of went to the uh, snack bar. Yeah, from midway through the first quarter until the end of the game, the Ducks dominated the Fiesta Ball. It was supposed to be a close contest, but Oregon 
Didn't get that memo. Apparently, neither did Colorado. We'll have a recap coming up, and we'll have highlights and the story, rather, of the five other college football bowl games that were played on this New Year's Day, because one's still going on. Sports is next. Check it out. Sonic totally messed up. They gave me two of everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Tater tot. Tater tot. May I have a burger? <laughs> no. It's too good to be true month at Sonic, featuring our brown bag special with two made-to-order Sonic burgers, two orders of fries or tater tots, even two drinks. Just $5.99 this month only. I'm so lucky. And score some cheddar peppers or mozzarella sticks for just 99 cents each. If you want to make it in the big leagues, you got to be in top form every yeah, single day. Yeah, that means constant training. It can get brutal. Yeah. we got to tune our taste buds. Every batch of cheese ages at its own pace. So Cash Valley uses professional tasters to decide when it's ready. So you always get the taste you expect. Cheddar, 142 days. Can't let anything throw you off your game. Spicy foods, jalapenos. You kissing? I don't think so. Cash Valley cheese. The taste tells us when it's ready. Ask the expert. Only on TV5 Online. You email the question, our expert emails you the answer. I'm Charles Finnezy, and for your plumbing questions, go to kphotv5.com and click on Delta Mechanical. Hi, I'm Dave Byrne. For all your pest control questions, go to kphotv5.com and click on Burns Pest Elimination. Ask the expert exclusively at kphotv5.com. To celebrate the grand opening of our new Chandler location, Ashley Furniture Home Store is... Pigskin Picks is brought to you by Jaguar. Number two versus number three today at Sun Devil Stadium. What a Fiesta Bowl matchup we had going in. The Ducks of Oregon and the Buffaloes of Colorado. A possible share of the national championship on the line. The first quarter gave us that close battle everybody was expecting. Then things got surprising. Tied. 7-7 in front of a packed house. Look at that. You know, the Fiesta Bowl is always packed every year. And before the game, you know, the Buffalo comes running. More traditional for the Ducks. And this is traditional for Joey Harrington. He throws a lot of touchdown passes. Here on play action, right on the money to Sammy Parker. 79 yards. It was 14-7 Ducks. Then the little shovel pass later in the quarter. That was to Ontario Smith. It was 21-7 Ducks at halftime. Harrington through four touchdown passes on the day. And this, the most incredible run of the day. Third quarter, look at Maurice Morris. You think he's down? Uh-uh. His knee did not touch. And he takes it the distance. 49 yards for the score. It was that type of day for Oregon. Everything went right. They win in blowout fashion over Colorado. The Buffs got a touchdown late, but 38 to 16. So Oregon has a shot at that co-national championship with this impressive display. Not only was it the biggest win, uh, but it was on the biggest stage, and and we did it in one of the most uh, emphatic manners that that a duck team has ever played. We made a statement today: 38 unanswered points, uh, and shut down uh, the hottest team in the country. I don't know if I call it a meltdown, but we we certainly didn't execute very well, and uh, it's disappointing because uh, our guys have uh, really practiced well, done well, and. I think this one uh, was a bit of a surprise for all of us. All right, so Oregon rooting for Nebraska Thursday at the Rose Bowl. Right now at the Sugar Bowl, great game. LSU, a lot of points. LSU leading in the fourth quarter over Illinois, 47 to 34. Out back bowl highlights now, South Carolina and Ohio State. Phil Petty to Andre Gauze, jump ball, and Gauze comes down with it, drags people into the end zone. 21-0 Gamecocks, but the Buckeyes come all the way back. Steve Belisari. The southpaw, right on the money to Darnell Sanders. Folks, we had a tie game, 28-28 at the gun, though. This is Daniel Weaver. Does it have the distance? It does. A 42-yarder, South Carolina in thrilling fashion. They win the Outback Bowl, 31-28. Citrus Bowl now, Tennessee and Michigan. Casey Clawson, just a, one great quarterback at Tennessee after another. He fires to... Uh, Jason Witten, 64 yards later, it was all balls. The final today over the Wolverines, 45 to 17 in the Citrus Bowl. Gator Bowl, 
Virginia Tech, Florida State, third period, Grant Knoll to Andre Davis. I don't think anybody's going to catch him. No. 17-13 Tech, but back come the Knolls. Chris Ricks to uh, Javon Walker. This is a 77-yard TD pass play. Your final, Florida State 30, Virginia Tech 17. Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma, last year's national champion, coming out onto the field, taking on Arkansas. Not a lot of points in this one. Nate Hibble, in fact, this is the only touchdown of the game. One-yard TD run. It was 7-0 in Oklahoma. The big story, the Sooner D. Nine sacks in this game. Your final, 10-3. They win the Cotton Bowl. The final pigskin pick week of the season is a big one here on TV5. It is a doubleheader. Here are the choices. First for the early game, the 11 a.m. game on the 6th, Jags, Bears, Bengals, Titans, Browns, Steelers, Broncos, Colts, Colts, rather, Patriots, Panthers, you didn't see the 2 p.m. game, but uh, those games were the Jets, Raiders, Bills, Dolphins, Chiefs, Seahawks. Just a few. There. Oh, see, everything's perfect now. You can vote. You can call. You can vote. You can log on. A lot of ways to do it, and we'll announce the winning games Thursday at 10. Gary Barnett just seems, he seems stunned. Yeah, he, he just, well, he said that. He yeah, said exactly. Meltdown. Just, mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Chris. We will check out your wake-up weather when we come back. Ask the Expert, only on TV5 Online. I'm Charles Finnezy, and for your plumbing questions, go to kphotv5.com and click on Delta Mechanical. Exclusively at kphotv5.com. Think you know who will win Survivor Africa? Then pick the ultimate survivor, and you can be one of five lucky viewers to win a flight of your life. An aerobatic ride with Fighter Combat International. The contest begins Friday, January 4th. You can better your odds by keeping close tabs on the tactics being used by the remaining contestants. Watch the final Survivor episodes Thursday nights at 7 here on TV5. Visit kphotv5.com and click on the Pick the Survivor for details. Ask the Expert, only on TV5 Online. You email the question, our expert emails you the answer. Hi, I'm Dave Byrne. For all your pest control questions, go to kphotv5.com and click on Burns Pest Elimination. When my wife left me with three children to raise, I needed help. I talked to several different attorneys, but they all wanted several thousand dollars up front just to take my case. I tried to do my own paperwork, but I was totally overwhelmed. Then I heard about the divorce story. They made the process so easy. The divorce court prepared and filed my papers in just one day. My divorce went exactly the way they said it would, and in just a few months, my divorce was final. I would recommend a divorce court to anyone with domestic relations problems. For more information, call today. Thomasville, America's leader in fine home furnishings, wants you to start the new year off with taste and style. It's never been more affordable to purchase Thomasville quality and craftsmanship. Thomasville invites you to celebrate the new year with store-wide savings at all three Valley locations. And for a limited time, make no payments, pay no interest, and no finance charges till 2003. Start the new year off right and come into Thomasville today. At Thomasville, we've got the style just for you. It's that time of year. Monsoon storms can spring up in no time, often bringing with them gusty winds and torrential rain. I'm Chief Meteorologist Ron Merritt. KPHO wants to keep you in the know about valley storms. An easy way is to check our website. Visit kphotv5.com, where we give you the seven-day forecast, satellite and radar imagery, as well as current conditions. While you're there, sign up to receive weather email updates. And for the most accurate weather information, watch TV5 News, where you'll always be in the know with KPHO. It's the first real day you can put those New Year's resolutions into action. Yeah, what kind of weather right. can you expect? Not too bad tomorrow. We will be looking at some increasing clouds, though. So as we head into the lunchtime hour and uh, even for the drive home, since a lot of you are probably heading back to work tomorrow, look for partly cloudy skies, 63 lunchtime, 68 is what I'm forecasting for the afternoon high tomorrow. Should be a beautiful day overall. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much, Rob. Thanks, Chris. And thank you for choosing TV5. Letterman's coming up next on the show. Stupid Pet Tricks and actor Vince Vaughn. And be sure to join Roger and Christina right here on TV5 tomorrow morning. Have a great night. That was the who, what, where, when, why, and how it matters. Now, you're in the know with KPHO.